Number 10, the heartbreaker Brock. You know, Brock's never had it lucky to ladies, has he? Well, neither have I, but that all changed in the 200th episode of the series, The Heartbreaker Brock. By far my favourite Joe episode, surprisingly a filler episode, Brock finds himself accidentally attracting a girl and now finds himself in a position he's never been in. Brock now completely unsure what to do, Missy tells him this is his last chance at finding love. In a funny twist of fate, Team Rocket as usual try to intervene and the girl falls in love with James instead. Brock is now motivated to win her back, but of course it doesn't work out for him and the cycle repeats. A hilarious episode one, the funniest Ash and Misty poker shipping hints makes this a favourite of mine. Wow, imagine Brock mm. married? You and I will be married someday too. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Number nine, Volcanic Panic. What the fuck's with half the gym battles in the original season of Pokemon? Ash got so many pity badges that Cinnabar Island gym leader Blaine even called him out on being given a badge just because he stopped a volcano from erupting. Nope, Ashy boy, you're gonna have to earn it, and boy did he earn it in an awesome episode. Charles Odd has been snoozing and losing up to this point, and then he met his match, Magma. For once wanting to battle, badass motherfucker Charles Odd goes head to head with Blaine's Magma. With the incredible strength of stopping fire blast, Charles Odd and Magma fight fire with fire and end up in the too hot to handle lava. Game over, right? You bet your ass it isn't. Charles Odd ends up with Magma on his back and going round the world at the speed of Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh yeah! Seismic Toss Fatality. Now that bad boy is finally going to listen to Ash at last. Oh wait, maybe not. God damn it! Maybe if Ash would stop being a noob. Number 8. Pikachu Revolts. I don't know about you guys, but I always love it when the Pokemon turn against their owners, and Pikachu Revolts was right up my alley. With the return of Butch and Cassie last seen in the Breeding Centre secret episode, they have a cunning plan to rule the world. After arriving at Mandarin Island, Ash, Misty and that guy who nobody gave a crap about, Tracy Sketchit, find their Pokemon suddenly stopping and giving them evil looks, as it's apparent that something's controlling them. Team Rocket also suffer with them losing Meowth, and the police later find out it's Butch and Cassidy controlling them with their psychic Pokemon Drowsy. Ash allows his Pikachu to attack him on purpose to destroy the hypnotizing machine and the Pokemon return to normal. Remember that Togepi Missy had that did nothing for so many years? Well in this episode it actually does something. Holy shit! I gotta give it to you Togepi. I assume you're a useless little shit but you know Metronome which makes you deadlier than ever. Number 7. Abra and the Psychic Showdown. Ready for some creepy girl shit? I should have changed and be prepared. Saffron City's gym leader Sabrina was no pushover. Just when Ash's luck couldn't get any worse, her Abra evolves into Kadabra. Give me a fucking break. Pikachu does some DDR moves and can't stop humping the ceiling and floor. Noob Ash has no chance. Just throw in the towel, right? Nope, because the little creepy doll girl wants to play with you now in her dollhouse. What I really love about this episode is that it's the first time Ash encounters an opponent that he can't actually beat with what he's got. There's also quite a bit of backstory to Sabrina mentioning why she's so fucked up, and the whole creepiness of the episode just gives it quite a unique feel. A man later reveals to be Sabrina's father, and Ash trying to impress Misty gets his trousers pulled down and fight the psychic telekinesis off. He tells him that a ghost Pokemon would de defeat Sabrina, but I thought psychic Pokemon were you for ghost Pokemon attacks. Oh, who gives a fuck? Number six, Charles Hard Chills. God damn it, Charles Hard, would you please stop hogging up the spotlight? Well, to be fair, all assholes grow up eventually, right? That holds true, and Charles Hard gets an old tired episode dedicated to his douchebagness. I mean, I get that Ash is a noob, but for fuck's sake, man, he saved your life as a Charmander. Well, it takes until Charlie's ego is deflated after being beaten by a pansy polyrath. After being frozen up by Ice Beam, Ash decides to do the right thing and help Charles Hard warm up. Charles Hard is having none of it and wants to burn Ash that ungrateful bastard. A few more hours in the night, however, Ash reminds Charles of how they originally met and admit he's not perfect and tries his best. There's some truth to that, so I've got to give Ash ketchup some points. And would you know it, by the morning, Charles Hard is back in top form. Oh yeah, thanks Team Rocket for spoiling things as usual. Dragon Rage, those cocksuckers. You've got the best Pokemon ever listening to you now, until you enter that dog shit Charific Valley. Number 5. Bye Bye Butterfree. Goodbyes are never easy in real life, so when Pokemon did their first tearjerker episode very early in the series, you're thinking, oh bollocks. A simple and familiar premise of a Pokemon falling in love with another, Ash, Brock and Misty discover it's the mating season for the Butterfree and Ash lets his Butterfree out. The Butterfree is already attracted to a shiny pink Butterfree, but he gets bitch slapped in return and feels rejected and hurt. Ash doesn't understand why no one would want to be with his super duper awesome Butterfree, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles, right?
Team Rocket uses this as an opportunity for catching all the Butterfree, but Ash's Butterfree is determined to fight back and win the Pink Butterfree's heart. After successfully stopping Team Rocket by working as a team, Ash knows it's time to say goodbye. Oh shit, here it comes. Where's my box of tissues? God damn it, even Pikachu's crying. Damn you, bye bye Butterfree, you still get me after all these years. But hey, still a better love story than Twilight. Number 4. Go West Young Meowth. One of the best episodes in the entire series goes to Team Rocket. Meowth, that's right. In a unique episode of Pokemon, at least back in the early days, Ash and Nagan take a backseat and Meowth hogs the spotlight for an entire episode. Going back to the big city, Meowth's flashback reveals he was part of a gang of Meowths and was trying to impress a female Meowth named Meowsy. He attempts to do this by learning how to speak English and walking like a human being. It backfires as she sees him as a freak rather than someone to be with. Meowth ends up being inspired to join Team Rocket after learning his first word, Rocket, leading with a final confrontation in the present day between Meowsy and the Persian who looked after Meowsy ends up with Meowth as a victor. However, Meowth questions why Meowsy would still not want to be with him. Despite still being rejected and hurt, Team Rocket cheer up Meowth by saying they will always be his freak. Who would have thought we could actually sympathise with Meowth? Well, maybe Team Rocket aren't the biggest assholes after all. Number 3 Island of the Giant Pokemon. Another unique episode in what I believe is the only time you understand what the Pokemon are actually saying with subtitles. It essentially follows two plots. One following Ash and Team Rocket and the other following their Pokemon trying to find each other. We learn that Pikachu is normal, Bulbasaur's an asshole, Squirtle is a joker and Charmander is actually a nice guy. So who would have guessed you'd end up turning into a stroppy git? Team Rocket's Pokemon refuse to attack and ignore Meowth without Jesse and James. Ash and Team Rocket find themselves running away from giant-sized Pokemon and eventually reunite in a Donkey Kong Country-esque minecart ride. The episode ends explaining why the Pokemon are so large, essentially being robotic as the whole island is actually a theme park. Not sure what is up with that Slowpoke at the end of Falvin into Slowbo, but in terms of plot and humour, Island of the Giant Pokemon is one of the most complete packaged episodes. Number 2, Charmander the Stray Pokemon. It's nice ones in the blue moon that Pokemon offers a serious dark tone episode, and I feel the original Charmander episode could be the best in the series. After discovering a Charmander all alone on the rock, Ash and the gang conclude it is waiting for the owner to return. They find out a few hours later the owner Damien deliberately abandoned the Charmander and that terribly forced British cunt didn't give two shits about what happened to it. Brock loses his temper and as a result Ash and the gang decide to save the Charmander. Outside of Team Rocket there's not really any jokes to it, but that's fine by me. What I love about this episode is that it makes the situation seem realistic. As Brock mentions, if Charmander's flame on its tail goes out, it will die. Not to mention Charmander being attacked by Spearows and finding himself in real danger. That's some really dark stuff. It was very close between this and my number one as my favourite Pokemon episode. So, how to the Charmander, baby! Number one. Enter the Dragonite. This has always been my favourite episode. I remember back in 2000 as a kid watching it brand new, hoping Ash would win this time around. Drake's Dragonite was the most overpowered Pokemon at that time, except for Mewtwo. The first two part of 6v6 battle in Pokemon anime history kicked off with Hello Pumelo, before the second half concluded with Enter the Dragonite. Does it matter that Drake's Dragonite knows more than four moves? Never really bothered me, as the show never followed the games to a T, and I feel that's okay. Ash having to use all his Pokemon just to take down on Dragonite? Holy shit! That was an epic battle of awesomeness. Too bad James never got his nachos. Pikachu delivers the victory blow. Ash is congratulated and his winning team is entered into the Pokemon Hall of Fame. Ash has done it! He's become a Pokemon master, right? Sadly, this was not the final episode of the series. Although there were bigger battle episodes later on, this will always be my favourite. So what are your favourite Pokemon episodes? Did any of mine make your list? Let me know in the comments section and I'll see you again on the ADRAG TV channel.